Well, we are now in the final days of 2022. Can you believe it? It was a year packed with major news, heartwarming stories, and developments we will follow into 2023. And we're taking a look back now at some of the biggest stories in 2022. Joe Paris brings us the peaks and valleys of 2022 here in Idaho. The year 2022 captured the peaks and valleys of life in Idaho. We met incredible people who embody what we all love about the gem state, but we also saw the impacts of incredible tragedy and how Idahoans respond. From ribbon cuttings at the new neighborhood pickleball court to controversial new state policy set by lawmakers, 2022 encapsulates a lot. 2022 is marked by major loss. In November, four University of Idaho students were found dead, murdered at an off-campus home close to the university. After weeks of investigating, on Friday, December 30th, Brian Christopher Koberger, 28 years old, was arrested in connection with the quadruple murder. According to a probable cause affidavit, Moscow Police Department was working with the Pennsylvania State Police, assisting in the homicide investigation. Police arrested Koberger based on an active warrant for first degree murder. Those murders left the North Idaho town of Moscow on edge, hurting over the loss of four young people who are loved so much. 20 year old Ethan Chapin from Conway, Washington, 21 year old Madison Mogan from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, 20 year old Zana Kernoodle from Post Falls, Idaho, and 21 year old Kaylee Consalvis from Rathstrom, Idaho. The four are remembered daily, their lives encapsulated in a memorial at the Kibbe Dome on the University of Idaho campus. There's pain everywhere. It's, you're just gonna have to love each other. You guys are just gonna have to hug each other. You're gonna have to be a little awkward and you're just gonna have to share. And the only cure to pain is love. It's the only thing that's gonna heal us. That's the only thing that's gonna heal you. So all I challenge you in, in, in the next week, the next days is just Go out of your way and tell someone you love them. Love the people in your room that you go back to, your apartments, your house. And that will make a difference. And that's something that they can see where they're at right now. The city of Boise battled through controversy throughout 2022. A KTVB investigation into complaints about the actions of Boise Police Chief Ryan Lee ended with Boise Mayor Lauren McLean asking Lee to resign from the department. Nine officers initially filed complaints against the Boise police chief, claiming he created a hostile environment that left some officers physically injured and others mentally impacted. We're getting to the bottom of this. We're asking many questions. We've actively reviewed reports we've received, have commissioned third party reviews um, and provided and, and received feedback. We've looked at policies that needed change and we've set management expectations and will hold management accountable. The situation of turmoil at Boise Police continued with a major revelation. Retired Boise Police Captain Matt Bringleson engaged in racist rhetoric during his employment with BPD, writing essays and participating in conferences under a fake name. Bringleson retired from the department in 2022 after filing complaints about Chief Lee. The people of Boise continue to question how Bringleson's racially motivated bias impacted his police work over his 20-year career. The mayor's office launched a full investigation into the police department, officers and staff, telling them that if they cannot or do not cooperate fully and honestly, now is the time to leave the department and the profession. The search for a new full-time police chief for Boise continues into the new year. 2022 saw a major break in the search for Michael Vaughn. The six-year-old went missing in July of 2021 in Fruitland, Idaho. For months, investigators at the local and national level worked long and hard days trying to find any information about what happened to Vaughn. Then in November, Fruitland Police Department announced the arrest of 35-year-old Sarah Wandra. She is charged with failure to report a death. Fruitland Police Department Chief J.D. Huff says the arrest is in connection with Vaughn's disappearance. Investigators dug up the yard of the Wandra's home in Fruitland where investigators are looking for possible remains of Vaughn. Nothing of note was found, but Huff also announced the identities of two more people thought to have first-hand knowledge in the abduction of Vaughn, Brandon Shirtliff and Adrian Lucien. Both Shirtliff and Lucien were staying with the Wanderers at the time of Michael's disappearance. Police say they had credible information that Vaughn's remains were in that yard, but they were possibly moved. The credible information came from one person living in the house, but police won't say who. When we finally reach the conclusion of this investigation, and I can assure you that we will, all of those who have knowledge of Michael's disappearance and have failed to report or hindered our investigation will be pursued. Police investigators encourage those with information, anything at all, to come forward. 
The investigation continues into 2023. The stage was set in 2022 for a major political year. All statewide political positions were up for vote, as well as lawmaking positions across Idaho. The Idaho Republican Party saw a run of heated primary battles between political rivals and allies alike. In the end, Idahoans essentially selected a new class of Republicans in all major statewide office in the November general election. One non-change, Brad Little, elected again to serve another term as governor. We're very gratified that they agreed with what we've done in leadership in the past and what we'll do in the future. Different but familiar faces wise, Idaho saw a lot of those. Scott Bedke was elected as Lieutenant Governor, Phil McGrain as new Secretary of State, Raul Labrador as Attorney General, and Debbie Critchfield as Superintendent of Public Instruction. Of course, during the legislative session, Democrats and Republicans went head to head on a variety of controversial social and practical issues. A major focus though, education and content. Lawmakers battled over libraries, books, curriculum, and compensation for Idaho educators. Arguably the biggest political story of 2022, Idaho's new abortion laws. After a U.S. Supreme Court decision in early 2022 reversed the precedent of Roe v. Wade, Idaho's abortion trigger law went into effect fully in August. The law made abortion a felony in Idaho, except in cases of rape and incest that are reported to law enforcement and when a mother's life is in danger. Republican lawmakers celebrate the law as a win for pro-life policies. A vast amount of Idahoans are not in favor of elective abortion as birth control. And so this trigger bill in particular was created to try to prevent that. But that's also why there are exceptions within the trigger bill. There are the exceptions for rape and incest, and there's the exception for the life of the mother. And that was very deliberate. Meanwhile, Democrats at the State House called the laws extremely problematic, raising legal and practical concerns. Uh, they've had plenty of time to get it right. It wasn't about getting it right ever. This was never about abortion, in fact. This is all about power and control of women's lives. And so if we think it's bad now, it's gonna get worse because we've already heard how they wanna come after contraception. And that is all about controlling how a woman chooses to live her life. Several advocacy groups filed lawsuits on the state level and the Biden administration followed suit at the federal level. Lawsuits continue into the new year. In terms of some practical concerns, like those from the medical community about when and how a doctor can intervene in specific pregnancy challenges, lawmakers believe that they will most likely address those critics during the legislative session in January. A spectacular sight in the sky. An Eagle Man captured this video of the Perside meteor shower back in July. Turns out this may be the longest meteor ever recorded. Jordan Ragsdale's recording lasted 27 seconds, and yes, 27 seconds is pretty unusual for a meteor because most of the time, the meteors just burn up in the atmosphere. Ragsdale told us that he has his camera mounted on the side of his house. It typically captures all meteors that go by, including this possible all-time record. So people actually saw it from Washington, Oregon, Nevada, Idaho. Since they explode so high up in the atmosphere, usually 20, 30 miles, it's kind of low on the horizon for us, but still lights up the whole sky. Wow. You know, and that's 300 miles away. Lightning doesn't do that. <laughs> we met a lot of great people in 2022, but one Boise boy sparked smiles across the country with his own story. A story he wrote himself, but then decided to share with everyone. Eight-year-old Dylan Helbig took a self-published book, The Adventures of Dylan Helbig's Christmas by Dylan Helbig himself, and he put it on the shelf at the library. There was a lot of librarians that I had to get past, so do you know what I did? What'd you do? I covered this part and covered the back with my body and just snuck it in like this. I came in, I came in running, and then I started to walk. And then I came in this aisle. No, wait, this aisle. And then I put my book right here. Eventually, yes, the library noticed the rogue book, but with Dylan's permission, they processed it, put it on proper stickers, and The Adventures of Dylan Helbig's Christmas did become a full-time library book. The story about Dylan's story captured imaginations coast to coast. The Boise author has big plans for the future, and yes, he has a growing group of fans, thousands that want to read his work. After a rough start to kick off the 2022 campaign, the Boise State football Broncos responded to classic fashion. The Broncos saw quarterback Hank Bachmeyer transfer away days after a loss to UTEP. A short time later, offensive coordinator Tim Plough was also fired. 
The Broncos then brought in favorite Dirk Cutter and promoted quarterback Kalen Green to jumpstart the squad. Led by stars like George Halani, J.L. Skinner, D.J. Schramm, and Latrell Caples, the Broncos rolled on to a perfect record in the Mountain West regular season play, capping off the year with a bowl game win against North Texas. Hopes are high for Broncos fans heading into the new year. It's so gratifying to, to be able to see these guys celebrate. It's hard to leave the locker room right now, you know, being around the guys just because, you know, they, they deserve this. But, I, like, we just told them, there's so many great young men in there. How cool this is, how big of an achievement this is. There's such great young men in there that they're going to do even better things in their life. We lost a great friend in 2022, KTVB meteorologist and all-time champion of community service, Larry Gebert. Larry was larger than life. His passing left a hole that is tough to fill. The ultimate family man. Larry loved his sons, his daughter-in-laws, and his wife, Julie, more than anything. He also loved the people of Idaho. Larry made it a point to always make time for anyone at any event, no matter how busy he was. His favorite pastimes included camping, telling stories, and water skiing the beautiful Idaho waters. He was a talented meteorologist and broadcaster who connected with Idahoans. Larry will be forever missed. He is forever loved. Larry's legacy lives on, though, through important community events that give back so much. He looked forward to and loved Seven Cares Idaho Shares every year. This year, we felt Larry's absence, but we know how proud he is of our efforts to give back, the Idahoans who care so much about their community, and you, the great people of Idaho, who always show up to help those in need, giving what they can. And through this year's campaign, thousands and thousands of dollars, thousands and thousands of pounds of food were collected for Idahoans in need. It's that community spirit that keeps this community so special. So we head into 2023, a new year, a new slate. Make 2023 a special year. We wish you and your family all the best.